Hello and welcome to Advanced Algebra 2 Summer Boot Camp. I'm your host, Mr. Stark, aka Starkulus. This is the first of a series of video lessons designed to prepare students for Advanced Algebra 2, which is basically Algebra 2 in the fall and trigonometry in the spring. Together, we'll review Algebra 1 concepts, learn about the features of the TI-84, as well as preview some of the content in the course. This first lesson is all about the graphing calculator basics. So take a look down below, you'll see this document. And I'll be working through this document. You could follow along. And there are examples on here, and I'll just scroll up as we go through the examples. But at the top of the screen, you see my calculator, which is on my computer. You could see all the buttons that I press, as well as my main screen, as well as the key press history. So you should have a TI-84 calculator and follow along. And if you need me to uh, slow down, well, you could pause me so you could catch up actually. So let's get started. First thing we need is a calculator that's on. So make sure that's on by pressing the on button. And we'll just work through this first example. Notice the key press history down below there. So three divided by 15, and then we press enter. So that gives us a decimal. It automatically converts fractions to decimals. Uh, but we could actually convert that back if we wanted to by using this special feature math fraction. So that arrow means it's converting to a fraction. Enter, and then enter again. So math, enter, enter. It's really easy to remember. And that is 1 fifth, which is the same as 3 fifteenths. Hey, that's kind of cool. But let's do the next one, 0.258. And then we'll press math, enter, enter again. We could have also chosen the number one. So math one, enter. And then we get this kind of large, large fraction here. And um, there are not too many fractions much larger than that that your calculator can do. I think it's maybe four or five decimal places that your calculator could handle for that. All right, let's move along. We're going to input information by hand, which basically means evaluating. So negative eight, and the squared button's on the left. And if we simply press enter, what we would, oh no, negative 64, we'd be doing something that's not what we want. We want to square negative eight, which we know is 64. So we need to use parentheses. What I mean by that is, is that your calculator is doing the order of operations, which is squaring first and then applying the negative, which, by the way, is different than the minus sign above the enter, enter button. Uh, so what we could do instead is negative 8 store, so press the stow button, and then store it as x. I know that was kind of quick, but uh, then press x again and enter, and you'll see that the calculator stored it. Now you could store this as any letter, like A, B, C, D, all the letters in green. Now if we just press X squared, enter, it'll square that negative eight for us. So the store feature is pretty neat. You could use it for a variety of things and your calculator will do order of operations for you. Okay, uh, the next thing we'll do is set the window. So press the window button at the top there. And this is our default screen. Now, uh, so whenever we have different numbers, we could always press zoom six to reset it. So you might wanna jot that down. Zoom six is the standard window. It should be zoom one, but it's zoom six. So it goes negative 10 to 10 in both directions. So we have a nice coordinate system there. Uh, so let's say we wanted to set the, set the window to something custom. All we have to do is just type over the numbers there. So we're gonna enter negative three and then enter. So again, that's different than minus. So if you get errors for that, it's because you used minus instead of negative. We don't usually change the x scale to two, but let's do it. Y min negative six to four uh, for the y max, and then five for the y scale. Now we don't use these other things right now, x res, delta x, or trace step. Later on, we'll, we'll use some of these, or if, um, if there's a need for it, we'll check it out. So then we press graph at the top right. Don't press zoom six, because that'll reset your window. 
And you'll see that it goes from negative three, the tick mark is at negative two, uh, the origin. So every tick mark on the x-axis is two, and the y-axis is five. So that's what the scale piece is. So that, you know, say your curve is in a certain quadrant and you want to focus on that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is operations in complex numbers, which is not very common. There's really only two times in the whole year that we talk about this, but we press mode and we could go down to where it says A plus BI and highlight that and press enter. What this does is it change your, changes your mode to complex number mode, which is A is real and BI is imaginary. So second mode quits and we could just clear that screen. Uh, so let's just enter this example on the right. We'll enter both. So parentheses, 4 minus 3, and then the i is second decimal. So second decimal at the bottom, close parentheses, plus, and then we'll enter the rest there. So again, negative 8, not minus 8, and then plus 5i, so second decimal. So we're really trusting the calculator here because we haven't learned this concept, or maybe you have, but kind of forgot it. But basically the negative four is four minus eight. Um, but that's our answer, and it's kind of cool because it's in the, in the mode that, um, that we want it. Now, I like to use this trick, second enter. That's the entry. It pulls up the previous entry. So we could do that, and you could always like arrow up and pull up the previous entry, but it's a quick keyboard shortcut. Second left goes all the way to the left. And we could just replace the numbers and signs here. So 5 plus 2i. So just type right over the stuff. And this way we don't have to enter the i's again. Change the plus to multiply. And then um, the negative you could just delete. So press the delete button. And then uh, 6 minus 3i. So again, just typing over, and there's where we had to use the minus, press enter. And then we have our answer right there in complex mode. So kind of cool. The next thing we'll do is scientific notation. And uh, this we come across more often where our answers are in scientific notation. So I'm just changing my mode back here to real. Second mode to quit to the main screen. So let's just enter 3.2 times 10 to the 12th. So I'm, I'm doing it in scientific notation, but not the calculator notation. So the caret symbol above divide is the power. And your arrow is telling you, press the right arrow to get out of the exponent. Now, notice the calculator has that E there. What your calculator is saying is that 12 is a power of 10. So don't read that as 3.2 and there's an error or something like that. Um, that's the power of 10. So now let's just press the multiply button and it pulls up the previous answer automatically. And then let's type in scientific notation. So 4.1, not times, but 4.1, second comma. Your comma is like right in the middle there, second comma. And so I just typed in scientific notation as far as the calculator goes, and then it gives us the answer. So it kind of makes sense, 12 and negative 3 as a power of 9, but then there's a decimal place to worry about there, so that E10 uh, makes sense to me. But let's make sure that that's what we really wanted. So 1.312 times 10 to the 10, oops, times 10 to the 10, and that should give us the same answer. There we have it. So scientific notation. Um, more helpful than complex numbers, but also not very common either. Let's check, a, check our defaults here. Press mode. All the defaults are highlighted on the left. So if you have any errors you could, or something weird is happening, you could check your mode first. Then press Y equals. Everything should be clear, and the plots should not be highlighted. So if those are highlighted and you're trying to graph something and some error pops up, make sure that those are off. You could also press 
um, second y equals, which is the troubleshooting piece here that I'm doing, and you could turn off your plots there. You could enter on each of them and do that. Turn it on, turn it off by highlighting. So you can see the highlighted plot there. All right, finally, let's reset the graph. Zoom six, we already talked about that. So those four things kind of help us make sure we have no errors. But uh, when all else fails, some errors popping up and you have no idea why, let's reset the calculator. So press the second button and look at the plus sign. It says mem above. And that's what we'll use. So seven resets, one all RAM, that's just the memory. And your calculator is saying, hey, careful, it's gonna reset all the memory, which is the data and the programs. So we press two to confirm. And we could press clear or enter, or we could turn off the calculator at this point. And that is how you reset that. So uh, there are some other things that you could do with the calculator, uh, but those are all of the basics. And then as we move forward, we'll learn a ton more features about the calculator and what you could do and how our written algebra can be turned into uh, stuff that you could do on the calculator. Uh, so, but this is a good reference and you could always come back to this video or your notes in case you get stuck on the calculator. So, uh, so that's all for this first video. Uh, the next video will check out some very specific things related to Algebra 1, uh, and then we'll, we'll see some new tricks on the calculator as well. Okay, so thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you in the next video, slash you see me.